Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of VCTV, which is the Venture Capital TV. Uh, it's from La Token, and we host it every day, Monday to Friday. I'm myself, Sunny Mohanty, so I host it every day, Monday to Friday, 8 p.m. Singapore time. So today we have another exciting, uh, another interesting topic to discuss for 2021. It's about investments in startups from emerging markets. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, um, developing countries. <clears throat> Uh, today we are joined here by speakers from India, Nigeria, and Russia as well to discuss the topic, the trends, and the investments uh, in emerging markets and developing countries. So, uh, quick intro and background of our speakers, then we move into the questions and answers for the for the session. I'd like to start with Sean. Hi, Sean. Uh, welcome Hello. back. Hey, how are you? How's Nigeria? I must say, any day I wake up is a good day. Happy to be here to see all your smiling faces. And I look forward to talking about what's going on in Nigeria as an emerging market. Um, just to touch on myself, again, my name is Sean Burroughs. I'm the co-founder of Ingressive for Good. And I'm creations for the Ingressive Umbrella, which includes Ingressive Capital. A Well, they're starting a $50 million fund now invest in early stage startups connected to traditional African business sectors. Again, happy to be here. Great. Welcome. Uh, welcome back, Sean. And thanks for the intro. Next, I have Vandana. Hi, Vandana. Welcome back. How are you? <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, hi, Sunny. Thanks for calling me back here again and again. Uh, really happy to be here. Uh, so hi, everyone. This is Vandana from Gurgaon, India. Um, I have 15 years of experience in investment banking, had my own family office in Singapore and Jakarta. Uh, this is my sixth year back in India. I have done some investments, then went back to advisory. Uh, in terms of geography, we are a global entity and uh, we do uh, global deals from $1 million to $25 million. We are sector agnostic um, and uh, we are connected with global investors. So please do reach out to us. Sure, Vandana, and welcome back. Thank Next, you. I have Dr. Shrikant. Hi, Dr. Shrikant. Welcome back on BCTV. How are you today? I'm very well. Thank you so much, Sunny. Uh, I'm Dr. Shrikant Patsarthi. I'm from India. And by the huge set of books that you see behind me, you can figure out uh, which profession I'm in. And I'm here to talk about the emerging markets in India being an emerging market and a developing country. Perfect. I see a big smile on Sean's face. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shrikant, for that intro. And next, I have Harsh. Hi, Harsh. How was it? Welcome back. We were just finishing off another VCTV session with my colleague and back here. You must love VCTV, just like Gary and London, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's been back to back crazy shows. We just finished the session on SPAC. Now we are here back again. So glad to be, glad to join VCTV, glad to have you here, Sony. And you know, to have Vandana, Shrikant, and Sean as well. We are meeting for the first time. So a uh, brief intro about myself. Uh, my name is Harsh Shetia. Uh, I've worked in a Fortune 50 company. I've worked with the Unicorn, currently associated with our ventures as a venture partner. Uh, we are a sector agnostic network and we invest in all sectors. We've done about 60 investments till date and uh, happy to look at a, a lot of startups. So I'm looking at early stage, uh, post seed investment and we invest all the way up to $10 million. Anyone needs help can always reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Perfect. I think uh, we just have uh, today. We don't. Uh, I, I was expecting more speakers. Sorry about that. But anyways, we are done with the intro. Um, so today, uh, before I start uh, with the questions, so today many of the emerging economies are a part of the trillion dollar club and are considered as drivers for of global economic growth. The COVID nineteen pandemic hit economies worldwide, emerging markets being no exception. However, a combination of weaker dollar, as we know, the U.S. dollar better valuations, earnings, growth, and economic revival present a case to diversify across emerging markets. That is a good reason to be optimistic about the outlook for the emerging markets in 2021. Vaccine news flows is in encouraging and raises confidence that by second half of 2021, these should be rolled out widely. This should allow activity to recover and support a broader, a broad economy recovery, particularly in the service sector. So talking about emerging markets over here, let's start with each country. I'm going to start with Sean with Nigerian 
uh, specifically and generally Africa. So what's the landscape looking like for 2021? Um, for 2021, we are seeing a lot of interesting happenings. Um, so, of course, as you said before, some of the trends that you're seeing in the more developed countries are also the same here. So you're seeing a lot of uh, focused attention on these digital communication platforms. Um, even from the investor side, um, I've seen three new uh, proposals for different ways of doing the same thing. Uh, not necessarily the same thing, but, you know, um, the digital communication part. Um, and all these tech tools that are contributing to remote working, um, remote HR technologies where people are able to um, not only, um, you know, have, make sure that they're actually working and doing different things, but, um, you know, making sure that they're trending towards hitting company goals. So I'm seeing a lot of interesting in that space. Um, so outside of the remote work, remote communication, the remote collaboration world, I would say. Um, another big one, of course, no big surprise here, is actually going to be the health industry as well. So not only has Ingressive Capital recently invested in 54 Gene, which focuses on, uh, you know, kind of breaking down all these different things with genes and DNA to uh, come up with all these amazing discoveries. Um, there are a lot of other companies. There are the companies that are distributing medicine. So you have the logistic, uh, logistics element of um, delivering um, healthcare supplies and different things like that. So um, those are some of the key, key points that are sticking out um, as far as like what I would say are the high flyers. Um, there's the staple, um, which is interesting right now. So one of the staples is, of course, is going to be financial technology. Those would be the top three. So again, collaborative working together type of tools and technologies and advancements. You have your health tech, and then of course you have your FinTech. Now, what's interesting enough now is with the dollar going up and going down so much, um, it's really for the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria to take some drastic moves. They're limiting how much money can go out and come in. Um, for example, I didn't lean so much on my US accounts, um, I thank God that I have it now because you're having situations where I can't make a transaction for more than a uh, hundred dollars for my bank here. Um, so you're having a lot of people trying to find ways around the changing landscape in, uh, in the finance world. Um, another thing, again, I, I don't want to pick on the CBN guys. If you're watching, we're friends. I love you. <laughs> um, but um, another thing that you're seeing is that um, they're now going to war with cryptocurrency. So now they're basically cutting people off. If, if you are a bank uh, or a bank account or uh, a company that has anything to do with cryptocurrency, they're now changing laws that limit the interactions that you can have. And they're really trying to push them to the side, which is interesting because Nigeria is one of the biggest cryptocurrency markets in the world based True. on the size and how much money that's coming in and out. So to, yeah, so to go head to head with cryptocurrency is a very interesting move. And I must admit, I cannot see what the long term play is there and what are the what are all the moving parts behind that. Um, but again, there's a lot of activity in the financial uh, technology sector. Again, over and over and over, I'm coming and seeing uh, more proposals, more people trying to do different ways um, to to solve this problem. How do I send money to Ghana? How do I send money to to South Africa? How do I send money to the U.S.? All these different things. Everybody has a problem. And now you have COVID that in, enters the conversation. It's just changing everything. Um, so again, very interesting times there. Um, another one that I've, I've um, seen growing is the focus on, uh, I've already touched on logistics, but also the logistics of essential services. So there are a lot more partnerships going on where people who do have, let's say, access to a logistics company or somebody who can create an interface, they are now looking at how do they provide solutions to these grocery stores um, that have food just sitting on their shelves. You know, there's a very interesting balance that comes when you're when you talk about moving food with uh, short shelf lives, when you have people now that cannot come to the store as they used to. Um, so now they're trying to solve that problem again by deploying uh, logistical solutions. So we have the motorbikes. I, I ran across this very interesting company that actually has uh, actually physical pedal bikes. Um, they're trying to take uh, neighborhood by neighborhood and they're basically um, using buying and uh, bringing in just normal bikes. Um, let's take the whole motorized element out of this. Um, so those are some of the key areas. I could keep going on and on and on, but I also want to make sure I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, great. I think a uh, good point, Sean, you mentioned. I was recently, I think I read the news that Central Bank of Nigeria is planning to ban cryptocurrencies or they have already banned cryptocurrencies. 
So how does the Nigerian economy, as you said, the Nigerian economy are very pro crypto because I have seen so many clients, so many founders from Nigeria who are interested to raise funds, to list their tokens, and they have fantastic ideas. But how is that going to affect your economy? Um, it's very interesting because again, it's 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 hard to say because a lot of the activities that are going on cryptocurrency, of course, cannot be necessarily tracked in, as easily as some of the other uh, more traditional ways of spending money. Um, but again, I know that just I know it's stifling to the innovation. I know that there is a general frustration in the market as well, because there is a disconnect between the government and the tech ecosystem here. Um, and we've tried to create certain sandboxes and different things where we can kind of try things together and arrive at different conclusions together, which has worked well in some cases. Um, but they took a very hard stance on uh, cryptocurrency. And one of the major, major pushbacks or, the, or one of the major feels that people had is like, we had no warning. We didn't know what was going on. And then why? Um, so again, there's there's still a lot more to be found. Um, again, when you have more authoritarian um, government styles, which is again, it, which the only reason I'm mentioning this so specifically is because when you deal with emerging markets in developing countries, you tend to come across these problems more uh, more often. Um, usually, we would use countries like the U.S. as an example, but you know the veil has been lifted there as well. But these things are quite quite. Um, so I look forward to seeing, uh, getting more information and communicating. But as it stands now, we're all trying to figure out what in the world is happening. Thank you so much for sharing Africa and Nigeria's um, view on uh, for the economy for 2021. Uh, next, I'd like to go with Vandana. Vandana, so what's, what's you are seeing? Uh, what do you see, especially in terms of investments? Uh, I'm in India. I, I see a lot of Indian founders and entrepreneurs um, always contacting me to come on VCTV. I think the market is like, you know, buzzing with startups, but I would like to hear from you uh, what's happening uh, with, with India in terms of, um, you know, sort of investments. Uh, uh, so I think the uh, investor has a lot of positive sentiments towards uh, investing, whether it was during the time of COVID or uh, now as well. Uh, we have seen a lot of investments happening in fintech, agri-tech, uh, health tech, uh, edu-tech. And I think it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, India is really picking up on the new trends. Um, we see a lot of startups coming up now. If we look back a few generations down the line, people were shy to uh, take up a startup and start their own business because uh, typically there was a fear of failure. But now I see uh, there are more and more risk takers and uh, investors are heavily investing. Um, I mean, uh, the hot sectors are uh, fintech, edutech and agritech that I see as of now. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, though uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, and government of India has created this fund called uh, Startup India. Uh, wherein we are supporting a lot of startups, but they also uh, need support in terms of skills, in terms of uh, having their licenses done on, uh, you know, really quickly. So there the challenges are, uh, you know, typically, uh, uh, you know, we need a lot of uh, incubators set up as well over here. And here is where the challenge is, uh, I feel. But other than that, uh, uh, we have digitally transformed um, uh, we are uh, we completely uh, digital savvy now. Uh, all the webinars are happening online. People are working from home. Um, I have seen uh, there's a lot of change in each and every way. Uh, great, awesome, fantastic. Thank you, Vandana, for those uh, opening remarks. I would like to next go with, oh, okay, we have Dimitri Salduko from Russia. Hi, Dimitri. Welcome back. Hello, everyone. VCT. Yeah, hello, everyone. A quick intro and background because you just joined us late. Yeah, 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 sure. So my name is Dmitry. I'm from uh, Russia, Moscow. Um, I'm presenting here LT Capital and in, in Blockchain Capital. We are investing in uh, classic startups uh, from FinTech and EduTech and also looking for some good projects uh, from block sphere, of Blockchain Sphere. So glad to join uh, this meeting today and we'll be glad to speak about investment in startups uh, in development countries because uh, 
um, I can say Russia and the CIS countries were still in good development and uh, we have a lot of uh, things to do uh, about uh, uh, development of many sectors and uh, economies peers so what's what we are doing right now we are looking for some good projects uh, to invest in, into it and as I said in previous meetings we are able to invest uh, from like uh, 100,000 K up to 500,000 dollars to uh, promising projects so uh, we'll be glad to see something on this market thank you thank you Dimitri and welcome back uh, next I'd Dr. Shikan um, so, Dr. Shikan, I'd like to uh, know from you what's happening uh, with uh, your uh, perspective on you, with your perspective. What's happening? What's what's happening in India in terms of investments, uh, M and A, and IPOs? I mean, do you do you see a lot happening in uh, that uh, stage, like a growth stage, or what's happening, uh, or more, uh, much more happening in the early stage, uh, early stages in terms of startups, and where are investors actually focusing their uh, um, you know, vision for 2021. I'm going to start with you on that. So I think I think we have uh, moved. We as investors or uh, we as uh, 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 I would say deal makers have moved away from the initial hype of solving the COVID problem that startups usually uh, tended to follow. Uh, probably around the uh, you know about 11 months before where they were trying to solve the COVID problem and they were trying to uh, get their deliveries out and so on and so forth. So India kind of branched out into two different uh, sectors, in my opinion, which was edutech as well as uh, uh, hyperlocal. Now we are seeing a harmonization, I think, uh, sanity prevailing amongst the startups where they are again focusing on fundamentals. And uh, you would see a lot of this. Uh, I mean, I, I would say a lot of rethinking happens in the developing world uh, uh, much sooner than a developed world because uh, uh, we tend to solve problems on a daily basis and we're used to fighting fire and so on and so forth so i see uh, i see startups uh, uh, moving away from the hype which is a good thing and on the on the negative side there are again uh, 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 questions and valuations and so on and so forth which i feel are uh, are debatable topics and that is from my part of the world perfect thank you so much uh next i have hush your opening remarks like what do you see like it's an open question so yeah so i uh, pretty much agree with one another the focus you know on ed tech is there agri agri tech is there these have been really crucial in terms of the development that is required right so one of my close friends is a, is a core membership team of ninja card so the kind of way that they've done to kind of make it easier from farm produce to the uh, city level it's really important to you know kind of facilitate that supply chain however i would like to add a few more sectors which i'm seeing a lot more development in right uh, supply chain and logistics is one of the most crucial uh, sector which needs a lot of improvement right now what has happened is covid uh, when it originally started in the month of march and april it really exposed a lot of gaps in how the supply chain were how the inventory management was happening. There was a huge shortage of masks. There was a huge shortage of other healthcare equipment, agricultural equipment, right? So this, this uh, the crisis which has happened should definitely help us rethink how we plan our supply chain, how we plan our logistics, so that in uh, in the future, uh, this crisis is this is not the this may be the first one, but this is not going to be the only one. And a couple years down the line, unfortunately, we do kind of expect such emergencies to be happening on a much more frequent basis, right? So it's extremely important for us to be, uh, be prepared for it, plan for it, have contingencies for it, and ensure that the supply chain and logistics is well taken care of. At the same time, uh, another sector which we see a lot of improvement in is the healthcare delivery system, right? In terms of the advancements in healthcare, we already have the best medicines. We already have a lot of uh, medical technologies which are available to us. Now the only challenge is in, the, in terms of the delivery systems, right? How do we ensure that the people in those small towns in tier three, four towns of India or Nigeria or any other developing country, how do we provide these advanced medical services to them as well so that when they face a medical emergency, they don't face these difficulties? So these are some of the interesting areas where we should see most startups coming in, especially the growth in telehealth has been uh, incredible. So government, uh, telehealth, 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 telemedicine, okay. teleconsultations, those kind of avenues. 
so what had happened was uh, a lot of times the government was very stagnant on clearing these telehealth uh, um, regulations they were not approving that right the moment covid hit and within april itself they approved it and you just saw huge growth in telehealth platforms so we need so the uh, platforms are good but they still need to be a lot of improvement to ensure there's a lo- lot of last mile penetration as well so that is where i see a lot of growth happening in the coming few uh, years perfect thank you so much uh, harsh talking about sectors uh, i'm going to move uh, next to dimitri so uh, dimitri uh, uh, you cover russia or you cover um, i mean obviously uh, talking about uh, t- uh, just focusing on today's topic so in russia itself what sectors you see um, more money getting pumped in um, for 2021 more investments going to go, uh, happen in russia for this for this year uh yeah sure so uh as my colleagues said uh pandemic uh, situation in the world uh changed totally the market uh, as itself and of course interest of investors to invest in some uh, uh spheres and the business actually also make uh, made a huge transformation uh so same situation in russia and uh, the biggest pump we can see on the uh, food supply market because uh, um, as we see everybody uh, started to go uh, to work remotely and uh, people um, need to have a food supply on their places uh, doesn't matter is it work or uh, house uh, in-house uh, eating so uh, many shops and uh, like restaurants they started to uh, integrate new solutions about uh food supply in house and in office uh uh for the people who started to be placed on on uh, uh on on in one place and not able to uh like visit the restaurants and cafes this is a uh, i think a most uh, perspective one and second it's small business uh because uh, right now for giants it's uh for giant companies because Russia also have a uh, big mon- monopolies in all spheres, uh, banking or uh, any uh, like uh, food companies, automobile, any any kind. It's same situation in any country or in the world. So uh, it's uh, for now it's a good opportunity because giants are not easy to make some changes uh, for new market reality and uh, small and uh, middle-sized business able to uh join uh these changes and uh, get this wave uh to, to over changes and uh, provide uh, quality and best service uh taking new reality and new business opportunities so it e uh, from small business that can be some uh, service delivery uh it's it can be domestic services uh like cleaning like uh, uh online education so these spheres was uh, growing before uh, for example we are right now some uh, interested uh, interesting uh, companies in online education sector because uh, this sector grows uh, worldwide uh, very high like 20 uh, percent from past year and we see i think it will be more higher so uh, in russia it's same situation and we interested uh like to to maybe find some unicorns in this because uh market is really huge russian speaking uh people yeah in the world it's around 500 millions so uh also good quality and it's a, a good uh, good market to grow uh in this situation and using these current opportunities perfect Thank you so much. I mean, very interesting. Food sector, services sector, education sector. I mean, good. I mean, it's more or less like uh, similar. I think sectors where India and Nigeria more maybe. Let's let's move to uh, Sean now with the same question. What sectors, uh, Sean, do you predict, or as an investor, where you are looking to put your money uh, in terms of uh, startups? Shoni, uh, we can't hear you. Aha, I, I, I muted myself again. Um, again, it's kind of more the same. Um, the bell of the ball is going to be financial, uh, the, the fintech space. Um, 
interestingly enough, there's all different types and activity around this space. If you look at what's happening in Ghana now, for for example, um, even there's activities in financial instruments. So their treasury bills are are going at 17% uh, returns. Um, and even if you consider the 4% inflation rate, that's still like crazy if you compare it to an America, which I don't even think they're above 1% on theirs, um, if I'm if I'm getting it correctly. Um, so you're seeing all these all this activity, all this attention. Um, for us, what kind of uh, refocused attention in the fintech area was, again, our portfolio company, uh, Paystack, being purchased for $200 million uh, uh, earlier uh, earlier this month, I mean, earlier, uh, la late last year by Stripe. Um, and we have companies like Mono, which uh, is looking really good right now as well, getting a lot of interesting attention. Um, again, so we have, for us, what I see the market taking on in the in the in the short term or in the in 2021 um especially again with a company like mono um, and there are several others um is that we're looking more towards having actual financial infrastructure again the type of financial infrastructure that leads to companies like turbo tax and different things that are that are communicating with the banks that are communicating with the governments and that are creating that that highway that allows information to go back and forth more efficiently as opposed to where we've been relying on in the past which is pure remittance um and there's there's just there's that's just going to be a major focus. Again, it's a problem that everybody's dealing with every day um, and it's always gonna get the most attention. Um, and I'll, well, I'll go back on this one later. I actually uh, wanted to touch back on the cryptocurrency, but I'll come, I'll circle back on that one. Um, a lot of a lot of activity now, again, um, it's not only the uh, essential items, there are the, the restaurant, the food and beverage space. Um, a lot of companies and a lot of organizations now are, are looking for funding, are looking for support, and they're looking at different ways of, um, of doing business in this COVID world. Um, I'm seeing a couple of different uh, startups that are, that are focused on ghost kitchens, uh, which are kitchens that may not have a front facing restaurant, so to speak. Um, but people are able to come in there and order online through uh, companies like Jumia and et cetera. Um, there's always going to be the need for food. People are going to have to eat. Um, so again, people are trying to find new and interesting ways to uh, make sure that that happens. Again, that includes not only just the production side and how you're getting things in and out uh, uh, to produce, um, but it's just the, lo the logistics as well. Um, so there was a bit of contention in, in Nigeria specifically last year with the Okada riders. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Okada riders, um, due to the traffic gridlock, I know uh, over in India, I know you guys know what I'm talking about, um, but the traffic is just crazy. So you have bikes that are basically jetting in and out of traffic um, to make sure things can get there in a reasonable amount of time if you're talking about food and different things, packages and whatnot like that. Um, so again, there was an issue where the government wanted to basically stop all of the Okada riders um, and, and, and re-implement a new licensing process. Um, so again, with that being said now, with that coming in now, we're starting to see these companies come back. Uh, we've started to see mergers and different companies starting to come together and partner to be able to deliver services. So you have a company like um, GIG that's, uh, that's actually working with uh, companies like Mall for Africa, one of those bigger companies known for moving uh, international products, like if you want to shop on Amazon and different things like that. Um, so you're seeing these really new spins, these really new interesting ways of trying to find ways to, again, bring products in and out, um, again, and, and just basically address the essential needs. Um, again, that's going to be a focus within the, within the African continent over the six months as a major focus. How do we address these uh, essential needs, these essential items, and do it efficiently? Um, I've touched on the other one, which again, I think everybody has said this one as well, which is Edutech. Again, I kind of lumped it under the whole collaborative working environment. Um, but again, uh, there are some schools that are starting to open back up now, but there have been schools that have been out since uh, September uh, or even May last year. Um, and now they're, they're by force having to go onto these learning platforms or find their own new ways to be able to educate people at every single level. So again, that's going to force, or what I'm seeing now is more conversations, not only with the startups and the investors, but it's the startups and the government as well, because they're trying to co basically uh, co-pilot these solutions together. Um, and I would say those would probably be the focus areas in 2021. Again, there's going to be some offshoots, a lot of outliers, but those would be key focus areas by force. Um, and just to touch on what we were talking about earlier. So 
with the cryptocurrency, the stance of the government was that they have not passed a new law. They have not changed anything. They are simply enforcing a law that has been in place since 2017. So that's the response that they gave us. So where if you're going and looking and trying to find new information, basically that's kind of where they left it. Um, again, I don't think they're trying to collapse the market. I think that the government in Nigeria and, and most developing countries is more responsive um, than proactive when it comes to technologies that are emerging. So when they get to a point where they're saying like, okay, these, this is doing things that we can't account for. This is possibly disrupting and destabilizing things. Let's shut it down and figure it out. Um, that can be very painful for startups, but that's part of doing business. The flip side of that is once they figure out things that work and you have happened to invest in one of these companies, you have plugged into a nationwide infrastructure. So again, that's what seems worth the, uh, the, the reward can be worth the risk. Yeah, I mean, great points, uh, Sean. Um, I agree. Uh, Ed, Ed, EduTech space is, you know, basically um, is the sunrise sector across the world. So, mm -hmm. talking about uh, uh, focus areas, Dr. Shrikant, I would like to know what are the focus areas as for you? I mean, uh, specifically, you can uh, touch upon one sector if you wish to, um, you know, focus area for the next six months. And also, since you are a lawyer, I just want to know. I just read the news that the RBI is going to ban cryptocurrency in India as well. I mean, that has been an, in the news for a couple of years, but again, that news sort of um, is uh, currently uh, buzzing in the social media and they also gonna have their own digital currency. So if you wish, you can touch upon that as well. Over to you. Yeah, uh, I'll touch upon first question in terms of uh, 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 you know the sector if I may put my finger on if I may put my uh, money on a particular sector that would be uh, uh, I would have said educate uh, edutech and uh, and hyper local about about even eight months back but I think uh, uh, I, I have to circle back and tell that I will put my money on anything that is feasible and uh, which which makes sound logic uh, in terms of uh, user base and so on and so forth, and you can find a lot of user bases in uh, in India because the the in India and in any other developing country. And if you see, uh, if you if you go back to Sean's uh, point, uh, in terms of Africa as a continent, uh, we have to start looking as a continent, right? I mean, as a continent, there's a developing uh, uh, economy and there's a developing nation and there's a larger base that you can address and uh, so on and so forth uh, we have a larger uh, uh, larger pool and larger uh, uh, relatively market i would say uh, to address uh, so i would put I, I would actually take a very contrarian view and i would put my money on uh, the last time i and sean we were uh, we were laughing over this particular matter i would put my money on gaming and uh, and, and and naming to an extent uh, you know naming is uh, turning out to be a uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to endorse any platform over here, but I'm a, I'm an avid, uh, 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 you know, user of a particular main platform, and I can see the news feed coming in from the main platform. Uh, uh, you know, absolutely overlapping anything that you would find in a in a LinkedIn or possibly even in the Google uh, uh, news that you get. So I would actually put my money over there. Uh, 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 you know, uh, just just for the for the sake of entertainment of things, right? I mean, we have been too caught up for the past uh, eleven months just talking about uh, uh, solid uh, good stuff, and we haven't been talking about anything uh, entertaining. Yes, uh, more to you, uh, uh, more to you, Sean. So, with regard to your second question, uh, the RBI has put a ban, and I would. Uh, not in, I would not be in a position to comment on it, but I think it's a it's a ban uh, uh, which is which is which is okay for a, which is which is uh, possible and which is uh, which is in, in all likelihood is uh, is expected from a from a regulator like India uh, where uh, there's a user base is really high and we don't have. Uh, the adaptability to uh, a, a Bitcoin or uh, a cryptocurrency, but that shouldn't stop you from buying cryptocurrency because uh, you got a ringing endorsement from uh, from uh, I believe Tesla. If I'm not yeah. wrong, uh, do you need another endorsement from Reliance? Uh, you know, I don't think that you would need that. 
wow. because you've got a ringy endorsement from uh, Tesla as such. Uh, so, so there is where I rest my case. Right. Okay. Great. Tesla. I think we've uh, Amazon, uh, Apple is coming up. It's all in the news. All the big institutional, all the big enterprises putting their money on Bitcoin. Good to see how India is evolving in the few coming months in, in terms of cryptocurrencies. I mean, this world is full of surprises, honestly. And gaming, exactly. I mean, guys, I mean, this is another area, like focus area for 2021, I guess. Gaming can be education. Gaming can be travel tourism. We are still in lockdown. Most of the countries, we're not traveling out. Um, Singapore, we are not. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much, uh, Shrikant. Next, I have Vandana. Vandana, did I ask this question to you? Um, I if it was this one, uh, I well, don't think so. I was going to ask you what sectors are in focus for the next six months. Oh, OK. Uh, so um, I would focus on food tech, edu tech, and fintech uh, for the next six months, uh, because I feel these are the hot sectors that are coming up in India. And um, uh, anybody who wants investments in these sectors, please do reach out to me. Uh, so, oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, um, of course, uh, there are a lot of other sectors coming up, like you said, gaming. We are looking at gaming also, but uh, broadly, these are the three sectors we are looking at. Uh, and in terms of, um, uh, you know, India is really emerging in these three sectors. Uh, not only this, uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of um, uh, uh, abroad investors uh, approaching us for these kind of uh, startups as well. Right. Perfect. So entrepreneurs and startups, you know where Vandana is putting our money. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'd like to um, do a comparison like now. Uh, what's what's the investment appetite looking like uh, into a developed economy, for instance, US, um, as opposed to emerging markets? So are these markets reacting differently to 2021? Are they looking forward differently, or this, are they looking for forward uh, in the similar direction? Focus is in similar sectors, or or are there any differences? Um, I'd like to start with Hush. Yeah. So definitely, we've seen a huge res uh, resurgence in the angel and seed investing in India, right? Uh, so for the, what happened was for the last two years, the angel investing in India was kind of very restricted because a lot of the funds were deployed and they hadn't gotten an exit. So ever since they got an exit over the last two years and even in 2020, we've seen a huge resurgence in angel investment, right? And most of the investment is in terms of newer technologies. Obviously, the major sectors have already been covered by Srikanth and uh, Vandana as well, right? Edutech mm -hmm. is the one of the prominent ones. Gaming is there. Fintech is there. Health tech is there. Of course, all these sectors are there. But I would like to go take it one step further and even you know, look at what kind of technologies are developing, right? So definitely the... The future of the technology where we see you know a lot of progress happening is definitely ai the kind of data that we are generating it is literally impossible you know for a single individual to kind of sift through all the data right so if you can use that data and you know create more recognizable patterns and kind of create more sustainable systems it's going to be far more valuable and it will be helpful across every domain it doesn't matter whether it's supply chain whether it's agri-tech it's health tech fintech you name it it's going to be applicable everywhere right and that is where surprisingly Indian investors have really kind of opened up. Indian investors traditionally used to be very cautious of, you know, truly adopting new technology. They would like to see whether it's working or not. And they used to be very cautious compared to the developed economies like USA or UK or other countries. However, India is really, you know, really looking up to these newer technologies, wants to understand a bit more in terms of how AI is functioning, how uh, different other technologies are functioning, even AR, VR. So you, uh, there were a couple of startups who had pitched to us they were to gaming space using virtual reality to give you a live gaming experience, right? Those are the kind of startups which are doing very well. Even there were a couple of fitness startups using VR, which was actually motivating of uh, an individual using that technology to kind of exercise itself, right? You during lockdowns, what happens is we end up sitting hours together, you no know, physical exercises. So that is where use of VR becomes very crucial to mot motivate people to start moving and get their daily dose of exercise, right? So. These technologies have become very crucial, and Indian investors are definitely looking at very futuristic, uh, futuristic technologies, etc., to go go the go one step further. 
uh, blockchain is still uh, slightly on the lesser side definitely there is a lot of interest in blockchain but uh, i still believe that uh, the indian ecosystem hasn't fully adopted the blockchain uh, technology as of yet but uh, over the coming years hopefully we see a lot of progress in that space as well hopefully yeah blockchain is still new for many uh, how to put it um, many countries i would say not only india but i think india is way ahead now that's what i see thank you so much uh, harsh uh, for that uh, next i like to go to dimitri uh, question for you so how do you see uh, investments in developed countries versus emerging markets so are there in differences or not in, not anymore Mm, yeah, I can tell you what um, uh, uh, I'm personally with my investment team. We can see difference. Uh, of course, it uh, starts from the uh, from the team or, or, or the projects what we are looking for, because um, uh, you know, all, all com company starts from the people and from the core team. And I can tell you what uh, in, in emerging markets. Uh, the people are not enough prepared uh, to enter uh, uh, like uh, capital attraction market and uh, professional uh, investments market because um, what we are facing it's a uh, it's a problem what uh, people have many ideas uh, we even sometimes have a good plan uh, of investment or, 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 or sorry or, or for development of a company but uh, we have also weak points in uh, ma in management of the company or in uh, technical development. Uh, it can be, uh, I can uh, say it's about uh, blockchain companies or classic companies, doesn't matter. Because sometimes you are facing what um, it's like half prepared uh, companies and they have a, a strong weak points in, in the technical side or in business side. Uh, so this is like cotton uh, teams um, in emerging markets. It's uh, we, we can see it uh, very often uh, um, if we if we like analyze development development markets. We can see what um, people on these markets because uh, it's uh, uh, have a lot of competitors. It's uh, stable and have a lot of rules and established well enough. Uh, uh, the, the team and uh, the uh, company um, uh, pre preparedness and uh, team readiness to enter the market is more higher and the qualification or qualification of the people also higher so um, what's uh, what, what's we are facing um, about this and I want to add uh, one thing about uh, blockchain regulation as we're talking about this also because uh, um we also touch in the blockchain market here on this meeting and uh, in our fund and i can tell you what uh russia uh looking for regulation straight because i'm a member of a blockchain commission and we actually working with russia government uh, about uh, uh, ac acceptance of digital currencies in russia and uh, the first uh, part of the law was already uh, published and it, it has a general uh, uh, general questions and like uh, general crypto terms uh, and uh, in Russia we can see uh, like um, position what actually uh, government want to regulate uh, this sphere uh, and because uh, um, because people in the government will not really understand all all of the details of this market, uh, we uh, want uh, more like uh, make this uh, uh, market uh, m make uh, regulated very hard. So we want to uh, uh, close. Yeah, sorry, I think you are breaking up a bit uh you're breaking up a bit oh. but it's okay thank you thank you uh, yeah to, towards the end i think it's okay so talking about differences between uh the developed countries i mean amazon warehouse i saw a video where the robots were moving all around the warehouse in the factory 
uh, where they produce. So do, you, uh, we, do we see something similar happening in India or Africa or Nigeria specifically? Uh, Sean, uh, how, long, how, how different these two worlds are and how, is the gap going to be closer, like, like lesser, <laughs> sorry, not closer, lesser in 2021 or is it going to be even bigger? Uh, we are mute now. <laughs> it's okay. I would, I would say I think it's going to trend backwards just a little bit as far as the investment. Um, but I still think we're, we're going to see some great activity happening. Um, what's, what's going on now is just it's survival of the fittest mode. So a lot of those weaker companies um, are, are kind of fall, are, are just like it's going on all over the world. A lot of them are kind of crashing and collapsing. So the companies that you are seeing that are that are investment ready, you're seeing less of them, uh, but you're seeing stronger companies. That's just what I've seen, more well put together companies. Um, so with that being said, just to take it back a little bit and go to the, the general question we were talking about is like, what is the major differences in emerging markets versus developing countries um, regarding regarding investment. Um, one of the things that I noticed is that like, I know that Ingressive Capital did an amazing job of getting local investors like uh, Aluko Onoyobode, which is one of the most premier law firms in the country, um, the Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Fund, which again um, is pretty unheard of uh, in VC, in our VC space. Um, but what we're finding outside of those, those bright shining stars is that a lot of our money is coming from the US and coming from the UK. There's a lot of foreign investment that supporting uh, these larger ticket sales that you're seeing as far as investments go in, into companies and startups. Um, so with that being said, it is different here. Um, when you're trying to convince foreign money to make investments in these local companies here, you have the same issue. Again, what I just mentioned, you, you come across inadequate deal flow. Um, you have to be, we have to have, uh, we have to address the risk appetite, if that makes sense. Um, you know, like a lot of people are not necessarily just comfortable with in, with investing in the Nigerian uh, in, in Nigeria or the African continent. Again, if if I can say one thing about Africa, there's a lot of amazing things happening here, but the continent and at, at large has some of the worst PR in human history. Um, so you just don't get to hear about some of the great things happening that kind of changes your perspective. You're really only hearing about all of the corruption, all of the uh, all of the of different things i'm sorry i said very much very rightly very rightly right. said right and then yeah so if you have um again if you're facing inadequate deal flow if you're if you're um if you're facing a risk appetite that doesn't necessarily benefit the company and then you have um a lack of local startup awareness again um there are just certain startups that um i mean i'm focused on the african market but i'm sure everybody is is introduced to companies are interesting new potential companies that have uh this 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 great uh, i keep using potential but this great potential you may hear about them but you don't hear about those companies here and then you don't know in the context in which they operate so it's kind of hard to take african or nigerian fresh innovative idea that's innovative here and make it seem that way to u.s investors and, and investors in different places um another thing that makes it different here is that we often feel the impact of foreign market decisions. Um, perfect example is um, there's a global pandemic, right? Um, yeah. Everyone's going to need vaccines. Um, yeah. I'm seeing pictures on social media of people like, I got my vaccine sticker. You know where I have not seen that happen? <laughs> Here. Um, but so, so again, when you start looking at what is the difference in emerging versus developing countries, um, sometimes it's an advantage because like now we know that the vaccines are going to eventually get here. So now what I'm seeing is that in America, they realize they really don't have a way to track these vaccines. They don't know who's taking a vaccine and who's not taking a vaccine. There are people getting poked double, triple, quadruple times, and they don't know what impact that's going to have. But I see people over here, okay, how do we track vaccines when they actually do get here? So when these things do come, you'll actually have existing companies that may say, hey, we have a possible solution. That would be a very promising company. So you have those type of examples. And again, just to give another example, um, if, if you guys remember, uh, I guess the housing bubble, I can't remember what the bubble was, but 2008, 2009, America went down and they took everybody with them. <laughs> we all felt the risk, right? So again, um, 
we catch the ripples. Um, when these things kind of happen, um, it impacts us in different ways. So when when um, when you're investing in emerging markets, if you, especially again, if you're a foreign person, if you're a US investor, you kind of get a sneak peek at what could potentially happen if you're using historical data on these impacts. Now, again, a major problem, uh, the continent doesn't have a lot of big data. But again, you have com uh, different companies that are working on that as, as well. Um, and then the last thing that I want to mention is that the major difference in investing is just how the companies are structured in the context in which you see the companies. I've touched on this already. That is not always understood. Um, and you touched on it before. If you look at what's going on with Amazon and all these other different com companies, you're seeing robots and different things taking on different jobs and tasks. Um, Africa is a people-based economy. Um, and and you, will, you will encounter some some interesting pushback and interesting ways if you try to do things that take jobs away from people or if you try to do certain types of innovation that disrupt huge swaths of the informal economies um so again i think when you're in, when you're investing in the african continent or in any developing economy you have to take note of the informal economy and what impact it will have on the companies that you're investing in very, very good points, uh, um, Sean, to be honest. I gathered a lot of insights uh, from you. Like, again, as an investor, foreign investor, when you are investing into an emerging country, be it Africa, a continent, or a country, or India, or Latin America, anywhere in the... So you have to know, understand the market before that, uh, you know. So hyper-personalization, I guess that's Gary's word. He's not here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean. And the vaccine example was great example, I would say. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, Vandana, over to you. Uh, because I know you are wearing, wearing two hats right now, I, if I can say that uh, safely. Uh, you are part of G. Uh, you are some somewhat working with, working with GST Ventures as well, and you also sit out of India. Uh, so, what do you? What, what kind of? What differences do you see when it comes to investments and startups in the two different worlds, like in the Silicon Valley or the US as a entire uh, continent, and India as a as a country or Asia? Uh, so um, there is a lot of difference. Uh, if you look at Indonesia and India, uh, many holding companies are created in Singapore. Um, have you ever thought why is that so? It is because, uh, you know, in Indonesia, there is a lot of bureaucracy. Uh, not only that, uh, uh, startups only have operation uh, rights, you know, they don't have other rights. When in India, people want to save taxes. So the laws don't uh, favor uh, companies uh, over here as much as, as they do in abroad. Uh, yes, uh, I have uh, partnered with uh, GST because they are uh, uh, giving a very nice incubation platform wherein uh, uh, startups from India can reach the Silicon Valley as well. So uh, of course, there's a lot of different, also in terms of business inclusion. Uh, you know, we uh, in India, uh, we need to include a lot more women in the finance industry and uh, in developing countries, that's a typical challenge, even in Indonesia. Uh, but if you see in uh, abroad, there's a lot of business inclusion. Uh, look at uh, uh, what W Hub is doing, for instance. So uh, I feel there's a, a lot of change uh, to be needed in terms of mindset, in terms of educating, in terms of technology, um, in terms of digital transformation, and also uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know the laws and regulations uh, which are in favor um, uh, of uh, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Great insights, uh, uh, Vandana. Now you have like the West and the East. <laughs> Great combination. Thank you so much for that, uh, sharing those details. Okay. Next, I would like to ask Dr. Shrikant, because obviously you cover India, Singapore, and UK. So probably you can share your experiences in terms of investments and uh, you know appetite in these countries. So one must understand very clearly when it comes to developing countries that uh, uh, you have a lot of ground to play and uh, you know i i move away two miles or probably 20 miles and i see a different set of uh, uh, possibly a different set of people and different set of uh, economy as such for example i'm in bangalore right now 
and you move away 40 kilometers and i touch uh, tamil nadu which is another state and which kind of hits a different kind of mode when it comes to startups and i head south and i go to kochi i get a different feeling altogether i mean you go to lulu mall you get a different feeling altogether so you know you go to kochi you feel like you are in you are in a in a developed world so to speak so in india we are in a developing world you typically battle too many ideas and too many startups so to speak i'm spoiled for choice as a consumer right i can go with a swiggy or i can go with a zomato and you know it's not like kareem or uh, uh, you know uh, one of those startups that you find in dubai or one of those startups that you find in sydney or so on and so forth so uh, as a consumer and spoiled for choice uh, that means that businesses in a developing economy have a lot of ground to play but only have so much of feel to play so to speak right uh, so there is only 22 yards that you can uh, that you can build from a traditional indian pun that i can use uh, where we have a love for cricket uh, uh, so uh, in terms of that uh, i i feel that uh, startups which are well covered which uh, which have their unit economics right are still going to be funded we are seeing a lot of activity in the angel and the and the uh, uh, you know early stages so to speak but uh, never lose focus of the fundamentals and on the fdi point on the foreign development uh, sorry for foreign direct investment point uh, the developed countries kind of pump in money into the developing nations uh, keep in mind it's a it's a very uh, a balanced game uh, it's it's a mixture of finance and law so to speak so uh, if the laws of a country where you investing is not strong you typically don't tend to uh, invest in that particular country as such and on the legal side i would agree with vandana that there is there is more representation that is required from uh, from a diversity perspective so uh, so i think i think startups have to be very careful about uh, where they're seeking the money which is more important than uh, when at this particular stage well wow, great insights especially fdi the foreign direct investments point was worth noting as well thank you so much dr shrikant next i have harsh harsh uh, your insights please on the same topic uh, comparing developed yes, and developed emerging, emerging markets versus developed markets in terms of investments and startups got it so develop uh, there's a huge difference in terms of the problems which startups from the developing countries solve and the problems which the developed countries solve right so definitely we are uh, still operating in lot more basic uh, kind of situation where a basic problems where we mentioned right accessing more finance for underserved communities microfinance those kind of startups uh, we see a lot of potential over there and that is you know if we get more opportunity over there we would be happy to invest just like you have certain uh, health platforms right so health platforms obviously in the urban areas you have very good healthcare comparatively in the tier 2 tier 3 towns it is significantly lesser so we look at startups in that space so the the uh, scenario of investment is completely different compared to a developing scenario developing country with a developed world right i see the startups which are pitched in silicon valley and the, the innovation that they come up with is com- something completely different and we are still a couple years behind that however at the same time with the opportunity which we have in india is extremely very high as well so what happens is because uh, the entry level the the biggest advantage of being in a developing country is the manpower over here is quite cheap right so to kind of build your initial prototype and to build the startup at the initial level it doesn't cost too much right so you can trial very easily you can experiment very easily you can get through the early stages very easily unlike in the developed economies where even to start up you need like a quarter million dollars just to give the first initial start so that it gets at least a six month runway so that is where we that is why uh, to add to shrikant's point right in india yeah. we are literally spoiled for choice we have so many startups to choose from each solving you know uh, their own individual problems and they don't even have to you know uh, spend across the entire country even if they operate in few states just today we had a startup pitch to us uh, their focus was primarily on eastern india and they were doing fairly good revenues right and yeah. so india I, i would not say india is just a country it's a whole continent in itself in terms of population and the diversity right so uh, just identify the right opportunity uh, you know take it the true indian way understand the local integrities of the market over there keep, keep it as frugal as possible and you know you can have a highly successful thriving startup then and there that's it you don't need to you know really look at a uh, lot of those other bigger scales like you know you want to go abroad or all that stuff 
even obviously that's a huge plus point to have but even within india you have a whole ecosystem to survive on great to know about india uh, market um, both from shrikan harsh and vandana thank you so much uh, this brings us to the end of the session today let's take some closing remarks for 2021 i'll start with shon who is very eager to share his insights as always <laughs> And as always, he's on mute. <laughs> I just get so excited. You get me pumped up and I just start talking. Okay. Um, again, always happy, always a pleasure to be here. Um, please look us up, Ingressive Capital, and also Ingressive for Good if you're interested in social impact or if you're interested in um, finding ways to invest in the African continent. Again, we make investing here digestible, safe, easy, transparent. Um, with that being said, um, again, we look forward to another one. As long as you invite me here, I'll be happy to come. I'm sure I'm going to. <laughs> Thank you, Sean, for that energy and insights as well. Thank you so much. Dimitri, closing remarks from you. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for today's invitation. Uh, glad to see uh, same people here. <laughs> so we like, yeah, we like uh, started to be a good team and participate in on any meeting. So I hope we will uh, see also uh, good uh, incoming projects, and the we in LT Capital will be glad to see the projects from uh, many spheres, and uh, especially as I said, uh, EduTech. Uh, fintech and blockchain uh, will be most of uh, interest uh, so we in invest in uh, not only in russian market we are looking for cis and worldwide also right. so we will be glad to see good projects and thanks everybody for joining today thank you anybody looking to partner with companies in russia you know who to reach out to thank you so much yeah. for that um vandana your closing remarks please uh, so first of all, I want to thank you, Sunny, for inviting me again and again to this uh, 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 wonderful VCTV show. Uh, like I've said before, it's a therapy session. Uh, uh, you know, it's for like-minded people and it uh, really, uh, you know, helps everybody engage around the world. And, uh, you know, you're doing a great job to connect the dots over the ecosystem. Uh, you know, coming to... Uh, my company Convanto uh, would uh, uh, call out all companies uh, uh, looking into um, you know uh, looking for investments uh, into fintech, agritech, edutech, uh, food tech. Please do reach out to me, um, and um, uh, we are uh, we were heavily investing one million dollars to twenty five million dollars in these sectors. Uh, so we are also looking at AI, robotics, uh, gaming as well. Uh, right. So please uh, feel free to reach out to us and uh, happy to stay connected and come here again and again. Absolutely, Vandana. I love to have you again and again. <laughs> so that's Vandana <laughs> and she has uh, highlighted the sectors she's investing into. Feel free to reach out to us and we're going to happy to connect with Vandana Tolani from Convanto. Thank you so much, Vandana. Uh, next, I have Dr. Shrikan. Your closing remarks, please. I have a, I have only 15 seconds of remarks that I need to make. Uh, it's time to move away from the COVID hype. And it's time to start maiming. Uh, meme your thoughts away. <laughs> and uh, so I would I would urge startups to take a closer look at uh, the term sheets that they have entered into or they are planning to enter into. Uh, get sound legal advice. Do not rush into things. Uh, when in doubt, uh, meme. Yes, I love the love having Sean and Shrikant on one panel, and I'm going to have this more. <laughs> Thank you for the sheer energy that you guys bring in together as a team. Thank you so much. Hush, over to you. Uh, so glad to be back. Uh, you know, always a pleasure to have you, Sony uh, Vandana. We've done so many shows together, and we meet two new people in Sean and Dimitri today. Glad to meet you guys as well. And Shrikant, after a long time as well, glad to meet have you here. So uh, I'm I'm reachable on LinkedIn. You can reach reach me out at Harshetia. We invest up to ten million dollars. Uh, if you have you need any help in terms of identifying the right strategy, growing your business, raise funds, anything, just drop in a message. We'll be happy to help out. 
Thank you, Harsh, and you've become a part of the family as well. <laughs> I definitely uh, feel like one now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you all of you for your Thank time, you. and your participation, and treating this as a therapy session or a family get together, whatever it is. But I get to uh, gather so much informative information, like you know, uh, uh, insights from all of you. So again, uh, investors, speakers, startups, entrepreneurs whoever you are who are watching us today if you want to share the space with this like-minded people if you relate yourself to these people feel free to reach out to vctv team i will be more than happy to welcome you on board having said that have a great day i'm back tomorrow on another episode of vctv with another topic and another set of speakers till then keep watching vctv bye-bye bye-bye great to meet everyone <laughs>